Hi, I'm Deborah Cat. I am from the Bay Area, Bay Area um, Tantra Speed Date host. I am thrilled to be here with the Intimacy Hour. Um, I've met some of you before uh, when I did the Intimacy Hour last time, and some of you I know from Tantra Speed Date. But uh, if you don't know, the Intimacy Hour, the event that we're here at, is uh, a um, is is, a, is an event that comes through the Tantra Institute. And at the Tantra Institute, our mission is to create better lovers. And we don't just mean better lovers in the bedroom. We mean better lovers all over the place. So that means being a better lover to yourself, being a better lover to your partner, being a better lover in the community and having that love flow out across the world. Because our belief is, when we are able to love better, the world is a better place. So again, I am so excited that you're here with me tonight. Uh, the way that the intimacy hour works is I'm going to bring a topic to the floor and um, talk about that for a little while. And then you are welcome to ask any questions about the topic and or anything else that's on your mind. So um just so you know, if you're if you're if you're not already aware, uh, at the bottom of your Zoom screen on the right is a little smiley face that says reactions. When you click the reactions, you have the option of raising your hand, and that is the easiest way to let me know that you've got a question. Now you are welcome to go ahead and flail your hands around and try and get my attention that way. That's always entertaining. However, I do uh, suggest that you might want to use the reactions button. Um, so a little bit about me. Uh, as I said, I am the Tantra Institute, uh, Tantra Speed Date host in Santa, the San Francisco Bay Area. That's San Francisco, Oakland, Silicon Valley, all over the place down here in the Bay Area. We are just spreading the love everywhere. And I've been super fortunate. I've been with the Tantra Institute for about a year. I've been studying Tantra and um, uh, other different ways of loving for the past 20 years and super excited to be here. So as I was thinking about tonight's event, I was thinking, you know, I had all these different ideas about what I wanted to bring forward. And then I realized that yesterday was May 1st and or Beltane. So Beltane is the ritual of fertility. It's all about planting seeds. And this is a really um, tantric concept, right? The idea that where we put our intention and our attention, things grow, right? So this is a, like planting seeds. Now, one of the things around Beltane um, and Tantra is this idea of ritual. Now, ritual um, is basically when you take a concept or an idea and you create a space for it to grow. It's kind of like putting a seed in a pot right? That is actually a very basic ritual. And if you think about it, we have rituals that we do every day. I don't know about you, but I am a coffee drinker and I have a very particular way in which I do my coffee, right? So every morning I get up, I follow the cat into the kitchen because otherwise, you know, she'll sort of herd me in and um, I start the water in the electric pot. I, you know, feed the cat because she gets insistent. And then I grind my beans and I put my little uh, Melita filter into the plastic filter, put it on the cup, and voila, I have coffee. And, you know, I could do this any number of ways. However, there's something about this process, right? Having the water, grinding the beans, right? You know, opening up the top of the grinder and having that that fresh smell, the smell of freshly ground beans, just it, there's something about that that creates my day in a certain way, right? Now, I've been doing this ritual for about, well, a very long time. And actually, I can, I can kind of trace this ritual back to my dad, because my dad, as I was growing up, had one of these little hand crank coffee bean uh, grinders. And as a little kid, 
um, probably about, you know, six, maybe about six, um, I would get up early with my dad and I would have the, um, I would have the, uh, the job of grinding the beans, right? So I, I believe that to be the beginning of my coffee ritual because it goes back to that feeling of being part of something bigger, um, which is a big part of ritual is, is being, you know, something bigger, having some intention around it and putting some attention there. So, you know, as I said, we've got all sorts of daily rituals, you know, for some of us, we're very ritualistic about how we get up, we make the bed, we do different things to get our day started. And if we don't do those, some of these things, for some of us, it really throws our day off. Like, if I, you know, I only have one cup of coffee a day. And if instead of making my own coffee, I go and I meet somebody for coffee, it really has like, it just throws things off for me. So, um, so this is kind of a, an interesting way of, of looking at ritual. And then if we pull back and we start thinking about, you know, Tantra and Tantra rituals, right? So we have um, the most well-known of the rituals is the puja, right? So the puja is a uh, ritual of connection, right? So generally there's two circles. There's the outer circle and the inner circle. And generally there is, um, you know, there's a create a, a container created, which means um, that there is a certain time frame with certain um, activities that go within the time frame. So if you think about it, we come together. We take a moment, we get into our bodies, then we get into our positions, whether it's the outer circle or the inner circle, and then we have an experience of each of the different positions, whether it is getting into our bodies, getting into our breath, getting into our desire. You know, there's all these different pieces to it. And generally speaking, at some point in the evening, there is an intention set to have an experience, right? So we have these different uh, pieces of the ritual. We have the container setting, we have the, um, the intention setting, and then we have the actual um, steps that we take. And then generally there's a closing or a completion and a letting go, right? Does that make sense? Do I get a thumbs up? <laughs> Yay. So now just bringing it into sort of, you know, more um, uh, just just into the idea of, of Beltane and into the spring and into the idea of planting seeds. Right. So with seed or with, you know, seeds, the, the idea is that we've got this kernel, this spark. We put it into a medium, which is the earth. And then we tend it, we put our attention, we use, you know, with water or fertilizer or both. Um, and then we, we, we continue to tend those seeds over an amount of time until we have a harvest. So some, sometimes tending the seeds and tending those plants can mean trimming them or pruning them or, add, as I said, add, adding fertilizer or perhaps putting it out into the garden so that it can be pollinated by, uh, by bees and by, by um, birds. And, you know, hopefully then it grows into um, a fruit or a vegetable that we can then harvest. So, um, Sorry, I've got a question here. Sure, absolutely. So the stages of ritual are we have an intention and then we have a container that we put this intention into. And then there's a way in which we tend the, 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 um, the, the intention, whether it's um, with, uh, with, with thoughts, with desires, perhaps it's letting go of something, perhaps it's calling something in. And then we have a completion. And after we complete it, 
either a couple of things happen. If whatever it is that we had the intention for is complete within that ritual, then we have the harvest then. If it's something that we are planting the seed in, then we continue to put our attention and intention until this thing comes to fruition. So anyway, so part of the ritual process, um, and as we do it in tantras, again, I, I mentioned we have the puja situated, the puja ritual and setting. And so um, many times this is a place where the ritual or the intention, uh, at least in the tantra speed date, is to meet to meet people, to meet connect, to make connection, right? We never quite know what the outcome of these connections are, but it is an opportunity to come together. And as we like to say, you know, the beautiful thing about uh, and the secret of Tantra Speed Date is we never know what these connections are going to be. We never know what we're going to harvest out of them. We never know what, what they're going to grow into. Um, it could be a friend. It could be a um partnership, it could be a housemate. So there's a lot of different opportunities. It's a little different than when you're taking, say, vegetable seeds and sowing those and, and planting those. So now um, that so so ritual is kind of what I was wanting to talk about and this idea of manifestation around the ritual. Manifestation being the um, having something putting our attention and our intention and attention in a certain place to have something grow, to have something come into fruition. Now, the trick about this is, as I was just saying, that it's like, it's very easy to say, I'm going to manifest something or I'm going to create something and I want it to look exactly like this. Um, I don't know if about you, but I've, I've done more gardening in this last year than I've ever done before. And when I first started gardening, I thought it was going to look very much like it did in the pictures where there's neat little rows and very like uniform looking, looking plants and vegetables. And, and, and that's not how this works at all. Um, the truth is, is you sort of put things out and you, you know, do your best to stay on top of weeding and watering and everything else, but you just don't know what you're getting. Like, for instance, you could have four plants in a row and they could have the same starts, the same everything else, and one plant will be bigger than all of the rest. And it may be that I'm doing something to my plants that I'm not aware of, and I'm just not that experienced a gardener, but it's like, it's just an interesting process of being able to put things in and out and then having to step back and go like, okay, whatever comes up, comes up, and I'm going to work with what's in the moment. Does that make sense? And so... The reason that I bring this up is because, you know, these, this idea of ritual, this idea of seeds, this idea of, of, of allowing things to manifest as they manifest is very much within the classic Tantra ideals, right? We have, you know, we have an ongoing relationship with the universe, right? With something bigger. So again, going back to this idea of being amazing lovers, right? We have this opportunity to love out, but at the same time, we have to receive in. And so there's this ongoing circuit, right? Whether that circuit is with ourselves or whether that circuit is with our lovers or whether that circuit is with the community, there's an ongoing breathing in and exhaling out, receiving and giving, right? So again, it's sort of the planting seeds, the watering seeds and seeing what comes up. So I would love to ask you to join me to have a, a little bit of an experience. And so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna invite you in. Oh, I didn't say this earlier because I was busy having technical difficulties, but just so you know, the, um, the uh, if you wanted to ask questions, um, again, you could either do it in the chat or if you go ahead and um, ask, uh, 
I, it is my picture that is pinned. So even though we're recording, um, I'm the only one that will be seen. So you get to keep your, your, your question is still anonymous, although your voice may, may come into the recording. So I just wanted to make sure I said that because I know I got a little um, uh, kerfuffled uh, trying to figure out how to, how to have everything work out right. So the experience I'd like to have is if you would be willing to go ahead and take your right hand and put it on your heart and your left hand on your belly. Um, and go ahead and imagine that as you inhale, the breath is coming in through your heart is going down the spine and out through your genitals. And then again, it's creating a circuit. So it comes in through the heart, down the spine and out through the genitals. And one more time, in through the heart, down the spine, and out through the genitals. This is considered to be the masculine breath. The masculine breath comes in through the heart, goes down the spine and out through the genitals. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to go with the feminine breath. The feminine breath is the opposite direction. So that's going to come in through the genitals, up the spine and out the heart. Okay, so go ahead and again, right hand on the heart, left hand on the belly and the genitals. And go ahead and inhale. Comes up the spine, exhales out. Again, inhale, exhale, and one more time, inhale, and exhale. And then go ahead and just notice how your body feels. And I'm wondering if either of those, if there was a one breath that, that felt easier or uh, more familiar than the other. And now we're just doing this uh, for ourselves because we can create these breaths in and of ourselves. And um, the way that I, just to give them a little bit of, of, of form, and the way I like to use this breath is, so if I'm, let's say I'm getting ready to uh, work, um, you know, work on a project or work on something creative, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna use the masculine breath. I'm gonna bring all of that energy into my heart and I'm gonna send it down into my genitals. I'm gonna send them down into my creative center because that's, you know, the, the, the genitals, the second chakra, that's the chakra of creativity. This is where all that's the, the spark of life happens. So if that's, if, if what I'm needing is to be focused and to be um, in that, you know, doing mode, that's, and I'm, that's what I'll be able to do. Now, let's say that um, I am wanting to be more magnetic, right? So let's say I'm getting ready to walk into a room of people that I don't know, and I'm feeling a little nervous because that's the way it is. <laughs> then I'm going to use this other breath, right? I'm going to bring this breath in, I'm going to bring in all of the energy to the room, and I'm going to bring it into my system, and then I'm going to radiate it out. Right. And so this is actually gives me a little bit of confidence when I walk into the room. Right. So I can walk in the room in a more open and a more uh, available space, because when I come when the breath comes in and down, I feel a little bit more um, contained and a little bit more. Uh, it doesn't feel quite as 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 um, uh, comfortable for me. Um, you know, it's like for some people, it's it's like, you know, for, for depending on your, your, you know, 
what kind of energy you tend to run, it may be more comfortable before you walk into a room to bring that energy down and to be grounded versus to bring that energy up and to be expanded. So, um, so yeah, I like to try and make things a little bit more practical, uh, you know, especially when we're talking about things that can be kind of ethereal and kind of non-tangible. Um, but I just want to say that, you know, movement and breath and sound, which are the three foundational practices of Tantra, have incredibly practical applications in the world, right? I don't know about you, but um, I have found that if I don't get out and move my body at least once a day, um, life is not good. It's not good for me and it's not good for those around me. Um, in fact, I was listening to a uh, a podcast with Tim Ferriss, and he was talking about how um, when somebody calls him up and is doing a lot of processing and kind of going around in a loop, what he'll ask them to do is go take a walk. And if they feel, if they still feel the need to process and talk, he's willing to take the call, but he wants, you know, he invites them to go and take a walk and move their bodies first. Um, I've also heard that if you are going to have a charged conversation with somebody that is near and dear to your heart, you might want to consider taking a walk and having that conversation because you're both in a more embodied uh, presence and have a better chance of responding versus reacting. So that's one way we use, you know, that movement work that, you know, so we've talked a little bit about sound, uh, excuse me, we've talked about breath, we've talked about movement, and of course, sound, uh, the most practical application of sound, other than when we are in an ecstatic state and wanting to move uh, that energy, that ecstatic energy, um, you know, asking for what we want, using our voices, using our yes, using our no, using our requests or our offers. So, um, so yeah, so those are some of the very practical ways that movement and breath and sound are part of our daily life and our pot potentially our daily rituals. So um, does that make sense? Can I have a thumbs up if it's landing? Awesome, thank you. So I'm gonna take a moment and just add, putting your feet on the ground. How do you put a thumbs up? Um, if you've got, you've got a couple of tricks, thank you for asking. You can either use a reaction, um, there's a thumbs up on the reaction, or if you go ahead and um, have your video on, then I can see you are giving me a thumbs up. So whichever, uh, whichever feels good to you. Um, let's see, oh yes, so now I was gonna take a moment and suggests that we all put our feet on the ground. And so um, grounding is a very important process. And it is particularly important. Um, it is, uh, so when we breathe that energy in, sometimes um, we can breathe it directly out to help create more of that flow, but we also want to save some of that energy and send it directly down to the, to the earth, directly down to putting those roots into the earth. And the reason that we want that is so that we are grounded, so that we are in the present time. Because here's the thing, change happens in the present. It doesn't happen in the future. It doesn't happen in the past. To create change, or actually I should say to create ritual, um, we need to be in the present time, right? So the way that we stay present um, is that we stay in our bodies. Now, some of us are very body-oriented uh, uh, folks who are, are, and then some of us are, are more like, um, connected and, and to the spirit world and, and to hopping out of our bodies. Now, I know that this, um, this idea of grounding is very universal, like all sorts of different uh, traditions take it on. But let's go ahead and just take it for a moment and go ahead and close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. 
Allow that breath to go down your spine, through your pelvis, down your knees, down your calves, through your feet, and create these long, deep roots into the ground. And as you inhale, imagine that this earth energy is coming up and filling your whole body. And as you exhale, go ahead and let go of whatever it is that's not serving you in this time, in this place, allowing allowing for you to be in this present time, in this present moment. So go ahead and inhale up, exhale down. Okay, so um, again, I guess I'm going with the, the gardening metaphor today, but um, as, you know, as what I've noticed being out in the garden is the different shapes and textures of roots and how, I don't know how much weeding you've ever done, but um, like there's some, there's some plants you pull them out and they have these long roots that are just like these long, uh, excuse me, tap roots. And then there's other plants that you pull out and they've got all these fine little roots and they're sort of, you know, they're a lot closer to the, to the surface. And what's interesting is, and I know that, um, that Lauren talks about this idea of being able to be grounded, but yet still have movement in the body. And that's what we're looking for because we're looking to be rooted in this present moment and available to respond so that we're coming from a place of response, responsiveness versus reactivity. And when we respond to a situation, we generally get a better uh, uh, experience um, because when we are reactive, it's not a grounded, it's not embodied. And it, again, it is not in this present time. Generally reactions, when we react without having time to really think about it, what we are reacting to is something we've experienced in the past, right? Something happens, our body's like, I know how to deal with this. I've had this experience in the past. And so we react out of our past experience. Now, the reaction is, again, coming from a past experience, which may or may not reflect what's happening, happening in present time. So I'll give you an example. My partner and I have been together for an awfully long time. And over the years, we've been trying to do things differently because, you know, we want to grow, we want to expand, we want to have different and more interesting fights than we have in the past. And so what will happen is, is that we have this um, way that uh, instead of um, reacting, we'll invite each other into the conversation. We'll actually invite each other into the hard conversation to see if we can't actually move a little bit further past the place where we were before. Um, so that we're setting ourselves up to have a different experience. And part of this is, is allowing ourselves to get grounded, allowing there to be a different experience um, in present time. So does that make sense? I'm seeing kind of a shaking of heads. Do you need a little bit more clarification? Let's see, let me try explaining this again. Perfect. So um, when we are uh, coming from a more grounded place, right? So when I give my partner time to respond, then he gets to be in a place of responsiveness versus reactivity. And he actually gets to be able to respond to me in present time, right? So for instance, like if I, uh, one of our classic, one of our classic fights or classic places where we respond to each other is that um, I will go to his office and uh, I will knock on the door and interrupt him. And he doesn't, do well with being interrupted because he's a super focused guy. Like gentlemen, you know, some of you may, 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 uh, may recognize this, but he gets really focused. He gets super into that one thing that he's doing 
and he doesn't have a lot of attention span outside of that. So what I've learned is that I need to kind of give him the heads up, right? So, so what I've gotten to doing is I'll uh, call him on his phone, but I only let the, um, I only have the ringer ring once. So by the way, this was a conversation we had of like, how can I actually let you know that I'm coming down so that you don't feel like I'm intruding on your space? And so what we came up with is if I give him a call, let the ringer ring once and then don't, you know, and then hang up, then he's signaled into the fact that I'm coming down and he can actually get grounded and be available to me. Because if he's not available and I'm just interrupt, you know, if I'm just coming in, he feels interrupted. I don't feel listened to. It's a big fight just waiting to happen because that's what's always happened in the past. So as we go forward, we're trying to create new rituals and new ways of being together so that there is more love and more compassion and more understanding. And we both get more of what we want, um, which I think is part of the process of, of being a better lover is to setting my partner up to win and having him set me up to win. So I hope that makes sense. Well, we are getting near the end of our time here together. So um, what I would love is if you're willing um, to either put in the chat or to raise your hand and unmute yourself, I'm curious, um, you know, we've, we've sort of jumped around, but basically we've talked about the same theme, which is the ritual idea of planting seeds. Oh, so setting up my partner. Um, so when I say setting up my partner, I mean, I'm creating a space for, so what we ultimately want is that we both win right? We both want to be able to um, have a better outcome, right? So when I say I'm setting up my partner to win, what I am looking at is in the past, um, we've had this ongoing fight, right? In the past, we've had this ongoing experience where I come downstairs, I knock on his door, he's in the middle of something, he feels frustrated because I'm interrupting him and he's lost his thought. I feel frustrated because I'm like, I can't believe you're thinking about anything other than me and how could that possibly happen and why can't I have your attention now, now, now? So over the years, <laughs> we found that this doesn't work very well. So what I mean when I say I'm setting him up, what I'm doing is I'm signaling him in, right? So I'm letting him know that I'm going to come downstairs. So he has the opportunity to get grounded or to take a moment, put his roots down into the ground, be available for me for, you know, that time. Or he can tell me, you know, he can call me back and say, look, now's not a good time, right? So... Does that, does that make sense? Does that answer that? Um, so basically I'm creating a situation or we are creating a situation together where we are uh, getting to win together. Hi, my name is Diana. Um, I've been kind of learning about my body and I have been, I have started incorporating embodiment practices into my life so how i can I start what is what is a good way to start planting seeds for a tantra solo practitioner i'm single what a great question so um as you know we talked about a couple different ritual you know we talked about ritual a little bit and so what i would suggest for you is that, um, you know, we talked about movement, breath, and sound being um, the, the sort of foundational pieces of, um, of uh, you know, foundational practices of Tantra. So what I would suggest is that you create a time for yourself and perhaps you... Um, you know, you, you take some time and you create a space. And what I mean by that is it can actually be a physical space. 
And you might want to practice putting on some music to get some movement going. Maybe you are, um, you know, and as you move, you might want to incorporate touch, touching your hair, touching your face, touching your, your shoulders, touching your breath. And then, you know, as we did the two different breaths, the internal breath with the hand on the heart and the, um, and the hand on the belly or the other way. The um, meaning that the, the breath comes in through the belly and out through the heart and just play with that breath. And as you do this, you know, you want to create. So the seed that I would be putting in there is a seed for uh, either pleasure or partnership or whatever it is that you are wanting more of in your life. Excellent. Thank you. You are so very welcome. So just in the last few minutes, I'd love to invite if anybody's got um, a seed that they want to plant to go ahead and put it in the chat. Would you please explain a little bit about what, what puja is? Puja. Oh, oh, absolutely. So a puja um, is a ritual and it is, um, it's a very classic tantra uh, ritual. And the idea is that there it, it's basically a coming together of the masculine and the feminine energies. So the way the that this is, is created is that there are generally two circles, an outer circle, which is usually the masculine, and the inner circle, which is generally the feminine. And um, it's an opportunity for the, the feminine to meet all of the masculine players in the circle. So what will happen is that the, um, the, the outer circle will be facing in, the inner circle faces out. And so there will be a masculine and a feminine facing each other. And um, they'll have an experience together and that could be sharing breath that could be sharing movement that could be a verbal sharing it could be um, a physical sharing this is of course an in-person experience um, and so and the, the ritual the ritual generally has a very base generally speaking we have the basic intention of connection however if the, ta if the puja is for something or someone in particular, for instance, I had a friend who we had a puja, um, she was having some health issues. And so we had her in the middle of the circles. And as we went around, each of the, each of the stations was about love and healing. And so she got to be in the center of this energy that was being created. And so she got to have the experience of breathing this energy in and, you know, breathing in this healing energy. So the ritual in this case, the planting of seeds was the seed of health. And the creation, um, the, the, each of the stations of the masculine and the feminine was creating healing energy. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. you for asking. Thank you for asking. I'm going to go have a beautiful evening. Wonderful. So we Wonderful. are at so the we end, are of, the at time the end of the time together. I am so grateful that each of you are, um, are here. We have a... Uh, a testimonial for um, masculine master mas <laughs> masterful uh, masculine mastery, which is the the class that guy is the the creation of guys, which is holding for the masculine, um, which I highly recommend. While I haven't been through it myself, I have been on the receiving end of some of the gentlemen who have been through it. Um, just getting to receive their energy, getting to receive their appreciation. And so that's been really lovely. Um, I love the work that he's doing in supporting the masculine, bringing more of that into the world. And of course, Lauren's um, uh, erotic sovereignty for women is helping to create more uh, turned on and, um, and uh, responsible women. 
So, um, so yeah, so I just want to go ahead, we're going to go ahead and end our time together. If you've got a gratitude or um, to put into the chat, I would greatly appreciate that. And I look forward to seeing, forward you, again. To seeing you again.